When I'm working from a photograph, it's, uh, it's the most important tool I have. I mean, you can use a pencil or whatever you want to, but right here as I measure from distance between eye to eye, you can also take it and measure how far down is the nose from there, and you see it's almost exactly the same distance, just a hair longer. You know, it's just a little tiny bit longer, do you see that, than the tear duct to there. The next thing I notice is that on most animals, um, the humans are the only animal the only animal, the only being that has eyes that are facing forward. So most animals have eyes on the sides of their heads and so they have actually dual sight even though the eyes follow together. Generally they have dual sight um, in the brain. So, um, so what we're going to do is pay attention to the angle of the eyes and try to get that in there. Now we see that the nose is off to the side, so I really want to pay attention to where it lines up below the eye and make sure that I get that into the drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do is start out with something, and I never, I try really hard because if I'm working on a small dog, I don't want to go larger than life size. So um, this one, this dog is actually big, and so I don't have to worry about that. But, um, what I want to do is start with just the eyes. So I'm looking at the tilt of the head. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for the tilt. And I'm going to go to the piece of paper and I'm going to put the tilt on there. So where's my tilt? And then I'm going to look at where the eyes, where I want the eyes to be. The shape of the eyes. Now I decided the distance between was almost as long as the length of the um, length of the nose. So at this point, what I would do is actually take that distance between the eyes and also measure up to know where the top of the head is and how far up that is. So it's at least one and a half of that length. And then I can measure from here to the ear. Where does the ear start and how long is the ear? It's again. That one's actually one and three quarters of the length. So I'm kind of getting an idea. I can take that measurement over to the edge of the face, and it's amazing how many things fit right in there to that measurement. And that's exactly the same length again. So if I take this measurement over here, it takes it to the very edge right outside of this white edge of the cheek. So the first thing I have to do is be aware of which fur is part of the face, which per fur is part of the neck, and then which fur is part of the body. So I have to always look for my clues as to where the highlights are at the edge and um, keep that in mind as I'm drawing. So, and back here I have to be aware of what the top of the head is versus that's the body back there. So I'm not gonna be able to get all of the body in there, I just wanna get the head because what I'm doing is creating a quick sketch. And here you can see a couple of my quick sketches over here. And I'm leaving the paper on the outside. They're really easy to do. They're, they're fun. Um, but what you have to do is you build the, the face within the center of the, of the paper. So now I'm going to start off with that measuring system and make sure that whatever distance I get here is going to work up here. So Are you measuring I, from the pupil? The, 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 inside the tear ducts. Tear ducts. Okay. Yeah, tear ducts. Thank you. Tear duct to tear duct. So um, if I mo go that big, uh, remember the ear over here was was uh, another mm -hmm. length up above. So that might be too big. Um, if I take it from the top of this eye over here, which would be about right there, and I go up there, and it's three quarters, that would take me too close to the edge. So what I want to do immediately is start off and make sure that I have it in the right place. Um, I don't seem to see my eraser here, so just a second. I thought I saw you your there. white eraser? Yeah. It's right there on the side of your, no, on the side of your box. Here. Oh, here, here. Oh, okay, thank you. thought I had it. Thank you. Okay, so I want to come back in and re-decide Redecide, something like that. I make up my own words. <laughs> redefine, that works. Um, redefine where that line is. So I'm going to drop it down just a little bit more. I also am going to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to start off with an eye about this size right here, and then I'm going to look at this distance right here, and I'm going to look at that distance, see if that distance is going to work for me. So if I go from 
quarter to corner, go up one, up two, that works, up one and two, that works. Um, over from this eye over to that point is the edge over there. I think that'll work right there. Um, and then down to the nose, that's gonna center it within the paper. So there I'm a little satisfied. I'm gonna scoot it slightly closer together, make it a little bit, because I don't want it so close to that edge that I'm gonna have to deal with that. Now, the biggest thing about the eyes on a dog is that you don't see a lot of whites. In this case, I see a little bit of white right here, a little bit of white right here, but none there. And it's not just dogs, it's all animals. Their, um, their irises are far larger uh, than humans, and um, you don't see the whites of the eyes. Unless, you know, unless you're looking straight on, and, and you'll see little tiny pieces of it. Some animals, you won't see anything. So I'm going to start off with that, and I'm looking at the shape. This one's a lot more foreshortened than the other one, so it, it, it's a little rounder, so I'm going to bring that on in here. And I told you I do these in 20 minutes, so let's see how close I get to it. Ah. <laughs> haven't been doing them in 20 minutes in a long time. So what's, what's the purpose once you've done a sketch? Uh, what, once where, you, where you go with it after that? I take it in, uh, into something like this. I don't take it into an oil painting later, but I just finish these. I sell these quite often for people. They're great little gifts. So, so, so you said it's a 20 minute sketch. So what is that? Is that a That's sketch? a 20 minute sketch. Oh, okay. Yeah, of Murphy over there. I think the, the hippo was also a 20 minute sketch. So I'm looking how, how does this line up. I can look at where the nose is um, straight down. It comes about right down here, straight down. So I'm going to put the nose right there. The size of the nose, I'm looking at that relative to the shape of the face. I'll put it up high so you can see what I'm doing. See the, the width of the nose relative to the eyes? Look at how big that is. It's like three quarters of the space between. It's like one eye and a quarter. If you're, or one eye and three quarters almost, or one eye and a half, I guess it would be the distance um, from the corner to that one. A little bit more, a little bit less. Okay, so I'm looking at the, the width of the nose. At that point, I'm looking at the size here, so I know it's about that wide. I can go in here, and so then the next thing is I start defining. Okay, so then I want to look at the angle of the nostrils along with the angle of the eyes. I'm looking at corner to corner, outside corners. The inside corners don't match up because we're looking down at the dog, um, and I don't know that they would ever match up on the animals because they're on the side of their face, but the nose does go parallel to the angle of the outside of the eyes, which I'll probably find somewhere in here too. Well, that, uh, that ear appears a little higher, but I think it's, it actually comes in here. So I'm looking for some kind of... Um, um, synchronicity in the in the angles of things so right at this point I, I can look at this line here and make sure that that's going to be where I put my nostrils in there so a dog's nose is actually shaped something like this almost all animals even if you look at a horse even they have a similarity to this you're going to see the nostrils coming around so I'm looking for these shape you're going to see the nostrils within there's going to be a highlight here this actually changes angles this is going up or back on the nose whereas this is towards us so then you're going to see a, a little crease that comes between the bottom area here and the nostrils are in here so that's what I'm looking for in him and as I start getting this going, I want to show that there's a little bit of a side to this nose that I'm seeing, so the nostril comes in a little bit further over from that corner of the nose. And here's that little crease right in here. Now the other thing is I can check because it's always deceiving because you have two different angles. I can check the, the, um, the width relative to the length. And you can see it's just a little bit shorter than, it's wider than it is long. So if I go like that to that, I'm still not long enough. So I need to get it a little bit longer. Go right there. I'm going to measure this out again, yeah. 
one and a half, might be a little bit smaller in width. So we're going to go with the thinner nose, a little thinner. Have you used that tool on um, portraits? <coughs> yes. People? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, if I'm working from a photograph, it's one of the best tools to go in. I mean, the distance between the eyes, you know, instead of taking a pencil and measuring it out or a, a, um, or a, um, a rule or anything, this, this thing works great because the, the points are always stable and it, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little stiff when it bends, so it holds the position, but not too bad. They're like $5.99. Um, this is an Alvin. I have an antique one too as well that I bought from a garage sale. So they're a drafting tool. I just call it a divider. Okay, so let's see. Next thing. Did, did, you, did you determine ahead how much larger you wanted to make the image? Uh, no, it's not a mathematical idea. It's. Um, but it's bigger, right? It's bigger than this, yeah. So you can't, unless you have a grid or something. You can't. Right, yeah, that would drive me crazy. I don't know about you, but that would drive me crazy trying to get into the math of figuring it out. I just have to um, figure it out myself in my and see that things are accurate and use this to to decide my my length. But, but at some point, you establish something to enlarge what you're looking at. So you went, the first thing you started with was maybe the distance by the eye? Yeah, and yeah, so, so that's basically what I'm most, doing. One of the very most important things. Yeah, and, and that's you how I'm, go from there. right, and so everything is built off of this right. distance. Right. Even with a human, when I'm drawing a human, right. everything's built off of the distance between your eyes. Right. Yeah, good question. So I'm looking for darker areas. These are my hints, darker or lighter. So I'm looking for hints of where the jawline is by, by the colors in the hair. So I'm looking for that line. You can see there's a light edge to the nose and there's a dark edge to the fur below the nose. So um, right in here, I get a little bit of a hint right here. Although this is the edge of the head, it just changes planes. So it's going back in shape in this angle here. So I'm looking for, this area has a lot more texture. This area has a different texture in it, so that gives me my hint, plus the way the hair grows. Now on most animals, the hair will grow straight up, going up over the top of their head, and it changes angles. It does grow up in this area, but on the side of the face it grows down. And so when you start seeing the hair growing down this direction, you know also, plus you're not seeing as much um, definition of the hair strands in this area. It just looks like a modeled, hair, uh, modeled color area versus hair. So we know that it's going at a different angle. Those are our clues. Now I can, I, you know, just kind of eye this and I can take my pencil and look, look at how the angle between the, um, the nose and the ear cross the eye and get an idea as to where the point of this eye is going to be. And it actually needs to be a little bit further out than I was aiming. So at this point, I'll mark the spot where I want that ear to go out to. I think that's a little long, but that's just a point that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go back up in here and I'm going to move this back over. And then I'm going to head for that point. I'm going to go a little, it's still, it feels too far off for me, so I, I'm going to pull it this way and, and I'll play with it as I go along to make sure that I have it in the right place. Playing with it, I mean I'm going to adjust it here and there. So distance between here and here, I might want to check that out, measurement, and I just did it. It's about right here, so I think I'm in the right place there. So the white, now I'm going to look at the white hair. I'm going to go all the way out to this hair right here behind his head and drew a little bit of that. Although I have to be really careful because it might look like he had, like he's a husky versus a dog with a little bit shorter hair. 
So I might, I'm going to stop with that concept and I'm just going to go to about right here and I'll, I'll wait to see what I put in there. If I do put this in, I'm going to have to change the value between that and this area in order to make it work because otherwise this is going to feel like it's part of this. So because the hair is lighter and probably more pure white than his face is, it's coming forward because of that value. So I have to make a judgment call as the artist where to stop at the edge of the face, where to stop, that's the edge of the muzzle, but this is into the neck, but this is into the body. So I have to make those judgment calls as I'm doing this. So this is too low. And I could check my distance between the ears even against something and I could go like this, okay, so the point at which I feel like it grows out of the head, so the first angle at which it goes away from the head there and I could take that measurement and try to decide, okay, what does it line up with and I could actually take from the bottom of the nose to the tear duct, so I had to find something that measured that like that, the bottom of the nose to the tear duct. If I take that measurement and I take it across, so from that point to that point is where the, where the ear is going to be growing out of the head. So I can mark that at this point right there. That's where it's going to grow out of the head. So this is where the beginning of my ear grows out of my head and this will be the beginning of my ear growing out of the head there. And I can check that angle of that ear looking at, now if I, if I just look at the edge of the angle of the ear, look at that, I can almost make a straight line from the tip to the side of the nose, so if I'm looking at that to the tip over here, I know that ear comes all the way over here. See, that's a, this is where the problem is, your distance is between the ears, so I have to fit those ears within the paper, so you've got to really plan for that, that length, because it's longer than anything in here. Get a plan for the tips of the ears. Angles towards the edge of the bottom of the nose there. Looking for that. Looking for this distance here between on the temple, as we would call it on us. So I'm looking for that distance between there. That's where the ear comes in too. And then you have this fuzzy line of hair right in here that is part of the neck. And it comes down below the mouth right in here. I'm missing a little bit of space here. I didn't finish that off, so I'm going to come back in here, find the upper lip, and then find the chin. And basically on, on animals, you may see black lips. You know, you'll see black um, shelves and tear ducts in their, uh, because their skin is actually black around the eyes. Some of them are pink, but most of them have a black tone to them. So you have to look for the color um, and see what the color is. And then, um, but for in the mouth, you're just looking for this shape right here. The upper lip is very short in the center and it drops down on most animals. So this area here is very short, and then it wraps around, and you're looking for this shape, which would be the rounding of the cheek area, and then you're looking for the chin, which is something like this. So those are your clues, and then this angle comes back, and you have to look at how this fits into that angle coming back. So we're looking for all of those shapes within here. So the hardest part is getting the drawing on there because doing the hair is the easier part. I did give you some clues as to what you have to look for. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit wider right now because I, I don't feel like this shape. See, I'm always drawing shapes. Somebody was talking about that with me the other day. I'm looking for where this line intersects with the chin. Looking for that line right there. It comes, it intersects with the ear right at this point. So it comes around. I'm looking for this shape. And where does it intersect with the chin in here? Where does it intersect? It's right there. So I find that intersection point right about there. 
and then I build that shape from there. So the rest of it is going to be the, the neck hair, and I may put some more of that in. So I, I don't ever want to look like, you know, he's just cut off at that point. I want to feel like it's fading off or vignetted. If it was a painting, we would call it more of a vignette. So the first thing I'm going to do now is start blocking in areas of value. So the ears are very dark. This one seems like it needs to be a little wider. I'm going to drop it down just slightly because I'm looking at shapes now, really checking out my shapes, reassessing as I do this. And I'm putting it on really soft. I'm using a soft pastel so that I can smear it. I know what I'm going to do with it already, you know. I'm going to take this in and just block in the dark. I'm putting on less than I need because I don't want it to overwhelm my drawing. Um, mostly now what I see is that he is white with, uh, with the black in, intermixed. So I'm looking for, um, would, I might use a gray in that area and come back in with white because I want it to appear, appear darker than the um, darker than the uh, the light areas I'm about to put in. So I'm going to use a little bit of a gray. That's probably way too light. So I'm starting to. Here's one. That's perfect. So I'm going to take this one right in here. So even though he is black and white, he is not gray. He's black and white hairs mixed together. So I, I'm trying to. Um, use this as a underlayer for what I'll put in later. I'm just getting value at this point. And in order to get value, I've got to block out areas to start mixing in color. Okay. Sometimes I do these where I do the eyes first, but um, I'm not going to do that this time, I think. Now this is darker um, than what's up here. I want to make sure that I get it in darker, so I'm going to take a little black and mix it in before I quit. I'm framing his muzzle, because I want the muzzle to come forward. I'm going to take a little black in with that color down there and darken my gray, push that down and back in space. I'm going to do that in here too. See, by putting the lighter gray on first, it actually helps because it blends that black right in and, and I can use it as a, um, a blending ground. I do this in oil painting as well. I just take a, a color that's close and then I'll blend the colors into it that I want because a lot of times my vision and seeing it you know I see him there before he's there and so I just because because I keep looking back and forth I'm constantly reassessing you know what it is that I need to adjust because I'm already seeing him there So at this point, I want to get rid of a couple of extra lines that I don't like, that I decided weren't going to work up there. I'm going to pull those out. I try to keep my paper as clean as I can around the image so I don't have to do a background. going to darken the center because I'm, that white hair stands out over the black. It won't show up unless I do that. The brown won't be the right color. The color of the paper won't be the right color for that area. And you notice I did choose a brown color here so that I could um, actually get a little bit more of a... Um, yeah, I just wanted more color and I didn't know what color her dog was going to be but I knew that brown was safe and I'm working with a nice dark color that will be a nice background as well. So I'm not worried so much about um, having to finish around my drawing. It's just a quick sketch. 
So now I'm going to do a few of the areas within the nose that are really the darkest areas. I'm trying to sneak up to the shapes, the large, the overall, the eyes and everything. Um, so I'm just trying to put in the darkest values at this point. Because I do most of my work in, um, I have to scoot this closer to me. Because I do most of my work in the pencils last, I'm just building the the um, surface below. See, these are all very soft, um, really soft pastels. For doing quick work, it's really important that we do use soft pastels because, uh, I mean, you see how much, some people spend so much time, you know, layering perfectly, layering, layering, layering. I don't want to do that. I want to get these done fast and I want to, you know, get the, the first image that I, it seems a little too low in the leaves of just right here. So it cuts my work down the original work. Now when you do these like a pet color, like you said, um, <clears throat> do you take a picture of the dog or the yes. animal first yeah. and do it from there? Uh-huh. Yeah, when I was doing those, I, I would I would take a picture of a... I'd have my printer and my computer right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, a little laptop and a little printer and I would print them out right there and they I told them they could go shop and come back and I'd have it for them. Generally, they'd want to leave, and I'd just, you know, they'd come back and get it another time, which kind of made it easier, because then I could deal with a lot more portraits. Is it hard to get a good shot of a dog in that environment? Uh, I, I take a lot of photographs, but yeah, it can be. Um, sometimes people would just bring their favorite photograph in or email it to me. A lot of times they have their own favorite. You know, we all do. Okay, so now I want to go in and start working on details. Put some of these things down and focus a little harder. I might use some of the um, some of the uh, hard sticks as well at this point, the new pastels or whatever I, the um, Conte crayons, whatever I have that is a nice hard stick. I might grab those as well, um, doing some of the details. And I'm going to go in and do the eyes because I, that one felt like it was in the wrong place, and um, as I was building this, it, it just kept feeling like it was in the wrong place. So I'm going to move it out just slightly and then round it. Sounds like it's raining already. Mm -hmm. It was sunny in Sacramento. It was sunny here too. It was. <laughs> well, it was, as, I was, as I was driving up the hill at 11:30 yeah. or 12. So I'm just using the whites of the eyes or the um, whites of the eyes, the, sorry, the black around the eyes, the, the shelves and the um, eyelids. So they have tear ducts and shelves? Yes. Too. Yeah. That's they have the, eyelashes too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it a charcoal pencil? Is it? This is a charcoal pencil, yes. You can tell it's a little bit gray. I don't know why some charcoals are a little bit more gray than others. Uh huh. Uh, seem, I don't know anything about products, so when I was going to open it, be a little more vibrant, a little more. Um, um, yeah, they're very gray. nice. Um, Faber, 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 whatever it is, Castell. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they're very nice. But they're. They're as soft. Do you think they are soft? I think they are. Yeah. Let me see. 
What do I have? I like the, um, there's a Conte. I like Derwent. Derwent's my favorite. That's a Derwent. And this is a Carb Othello. It's made by St Stabilo. I mean, they're all different brands, different hardness. Um, I'm sure they're good. And actually, you, you don't, I don't mind them being softer at this, doing this. So he's got some warm colors. I'm looking for other colors other than black and white now because we want him to have some color and, and the more color you put into your paintings, the prettier they are. So I generally start looking for greens, purples, yellows, anything I can find because black and white are actually all of the colors mixed together or the absence of color. So there might be a few places that I can find a little bit of um, color within his black and white hair. Reflective color here and there. It, you know, it didn't help that he's on black and white rug and rocks too. <laughs> There's no bouncing color, so we can make it up here. That gives us free reign. So I'm going to put a little purple in there too, into the grays. You don't want to get too carried away, but you do want some kind of excitement in the painting, and, and color tends to put excitement into the painting. So here we're going to put some of this back into that gray right in there. Okay, so I'm going to go back into the eyes. I want to do the eyes and the nose because that's what brings the whole thing together, and then the hair is just the end result, the, or the, the finishing details. So. Um, Looking for highlights. Highlights are really important in um, animal eyes, and you have to put them in exactly where they are because they are not going to be exact. They're not going to be just like what you see in um, a human, which would be um, in the same place on both eyes. So I love using just exactly because you know generally they're outside and they're. Um, they're, you know, you're seeing a little bit of the world in their eyes and the reflections, so look for those reflections. And that makes it interesting as well. So, see, that just starts livening it up when you put the highlights in. So now I can go back in and find some um, golden brown color in his eyes because he has brown eyes. They used to be gold. Oh, they did? When he was little, Aww. yeah. Or I should say younger. Here's where some of you might want to use a Q-tip or a tool or something, um, just to blend that a little bit more. Now I'm going to blacken in the pupils. On a dog, the pupil is round. I don't like that black. There's a favorite charcoal in there that um, I can't find. I think it's got like a gray stick to it, but it has a really nice black. Can't find it. I'll try this one. That's a softer, that's a Derwent. Not quite as black as I want it to be. So there, I have other tools. This is um, Faber Castell. There's a, and it's a nice hard black, so I can come back in and, and get some of the details in a little stronger. Now this eye, as I told you, does not have any whites in it. This eye, I just put the whites in. You can see that I put the whites in. I'm going to get the shelves around it again. I do do the eyes fairly early in the drawing because everything is built around those. They're very structured and they give the, the sensitivity of the animal. So I start working on those and there's usually a lot of darkness around corners. So look for the darkness in this area right in here. Tone down that color just a little bit.
And the video is just, Joanna keeps saying that she should videotape these because I feel that she wants to remember everything out of my lecture, so it's no big deal. So you guys can say whatever you want and don't let, I hope it doesn't bother anybody. <laughs> Now you say something. <laughs> With your permission, I'd make copies too if anybody wants anything. Yeah. Now up in here, you'll see that there's like eyebrows almost right above the eye. I'm always looking for um, it's not an eyebrow per se, but there are longer hairs that create the expression of an eye right in there. So I'm always looking for the angle of these hairs right in here. It can determine whether a dog is angry or an animal is angry or happy. And it has to do with the roundness of the eye and it has to do with the, the it's just like with us, with our eyebrows, how they're angry or happy, wherever they're positioned, it has to do with that. So. I'm looking for where those are positioned. So the tip of the nose is a lot grayer. Where are those grays that I was looking at earlier? Oh, here's some nice stiff. Sharp. This is a new pastel, so I'm using a new pastel into the black. The black is not dark enough yet to get the tip of the nose to look right, so I'm gonna go back in with and make a darker gray. I said that wrong. Uh, I meant that the, it, there wasn't enough black on there to make a nice gray out of it. And there is a little pink in the end of the nose there I'm seeing, so I always try to get as much color as I can into the nose. It's really bright right now, and I'm gonna tone it down eventually. This one's got crispy edges. So I'm going to take some pinks right into the skin at the front of the nose. The older they get, and even if their skin tone is black, the nose tends to get pinker, like the black wears off. So we want to make sure that we get that feeling of the black wearing off. The nostrils are holes, so they remain really dark. Oh, that's a nice one. That's the one I was looking for. So I'm looking for that angle, however it is. Find it right there. Looking for the shape of the nostril, whatever that is. Anybody have any questions about different animals too as well? <clears throat> While you were talking, I was looking at this gorilla. Yeah. And it is different. Yeah, they have more of a... Um, a hole for the nose. A, yeah. An oblong hole for the nose. There is that line under their nose right down towards their mouth. Right. But their mouth is <coughs> downturned, not yeah. upturned. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because my mom has a little Shih Tzu, and her nose is just a little pug hole in her face too. But she still has a top to it. She's more of a, like a cat's nose is, is also similar. They just don't have this part, the, the upper rounding towards the back. So they have mostly what you see is, is the frontal part of this where they come down and they have that little centerpiece. But in my mom's dog, they're definitely holes forward and then little tiny rounding. Mm -hmm. And it's just smaller, but this is all, those are, that's, they look like little aliens when I draw them out. <laughs> <coughs> so now I'm just going to go in and start playing with values. I think that I could raise that up just a little more now. So the white goes all the way around. 
Well, yeah, that's what I'm seeing. There, there's actually a little halo or a little U shape in there that I could get that um, is more like this, but I'm seeing it at the top. See, what he's seeing, whatever he's seeing out there is reflecting in his eyes. And so I'm getting these shapes from, and I'm just repeating exactly what I see in these shapes. There's actually a little more white right here. And the more highlights you put in them, the sparklier they are, sparklier, keep making up my own words, the, the more sparkle they have. I'm going to lower, oh, I'm still feeling that's too low. So I'm gonna. So now I have to prove that this is um, a different angle than this. So I have to come in and I'm finding the hair. I want to get this shadow. I want to bring that darkness closer over to the nose. Still haven't finished the nose to where, let me finish that first before I go any further. And then now I'm going to put the highlights back in. There's a highlight where the nose is wet underneath of the nostril. There's light on the top of the nose. Just kind of want to gray out that pinky color. There's a little bit more of a lighter color as we come down between the nostrils right in here. And then we can wrap it around into that area right there and that area right there. And then I want to come back up into that eye. I think that eye is just too small. smear it, I put, I just use my finger and, and blot it like that. Okay, so now I need to come back in and start doing the hair. So I need to come in and start finding patterns of hair and hopefully during the process of doing this, I'm going to define where the edge of that nose is, I mean where the edge of the muzzle is. I'm looking at the distance around the nose that I see the shape of the little cheeky area. black and white so I'm, I know that I'm going in and I'm just finding patterns of black and white in there so I'm going to go back in and once I do I don't want to blend it out too much but I want the feeling of hair now in the right angles another thing I do too is I take a little bit of that pink color or purple or whatever and I'll take it right along the edge of something and then as I go back in with the hair it creates look at I mean it just kind of brightened up the the dog at this point where I added that into the edge I may take it down in here along the edge here to push but anywhere where I can put it in as an edge this here is comes down much further so I can put it into that area there this ear, the ears I'm just too small on. So as we get that there, so I can take that color right there and then I can come back in and, and work it into my black as I start putting the hair over the surface, over the edge. I just kind of let that blend in and I still have a little bit of it out there. It's not like it, it was, but it, it helps my drawing to be a little more uh, colorful. Mm -hmm. 
because this is black hair and white hair in the center of the ear, I want to get the strokes where the, the black hair grows first because it's underneath and the white hair is on top. So I'm always thinking about what layer is on the top and what's underneath so that I can get the top color to show up. Now in here he's got a um, dark spot that comes across this way. And as I said, I'm not going to go too far up there, but I do want to hit the distance. So I'm going to do a little bit of darkening in that area. Just finding the angle of the hair as it changes angles and then falls along the side. This area is about that, it gets darker about right there, so I need to find that dark spot to find the edge of that. So just to scribble back and forth there's the hair. Yep. Yep. You don't want to overdo it because you want to keep it really loose so that at the edge you can just, you know, this is going to be how the edge is going to be, you know, I'm just not going to even finish that area. A little bit darker on the upper lip, I mean the bottom lip at the top. So I want to make sure that I get that in. And I'm, in order to show this shape right here on this side, because this side I have a strong line I can put in, this side is going back and I'm getting a lot of foreshortening in this angle right here. I've got to create a lot of lines that follow the foreshortening of the shape. It's just like any object that you're doing. When you're foreshortening, you've got to follow the contour. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm not going to put any hairs in so much in that area as much as I'm going to create patterns of value that fall in that area there. Lots of dark in here. So he's got like a white streak right about here, so I've got to frame that area. And then in here he's got this really soft long fur that comes up right before the ear. And it comes really close to the eye right in here, so it's actually all in here under that purple area which tells me my ear is out too far. So I'm gonna take it back in. See what happens to your paper? I mean, you can keep something over it, but I prefer just to come back in and clean it up. That's why I like these erasers. They just, like, as long as I haven't uh, pushed it in too hard and it's just fingertips, it, it'll erase right out. Going back to the size they were a while ago when I <laughs> decided that I needed to make them bigger. <laughs> now the, the ear goes out in this area, it goes in here, and then it goes out again. And it's ever so slightly, so I want to really re reinforce that in my brain. So I'm going to come back in and... I could take a little bit of that pink back in if I want to, just into the edge. I could take a purple even. And this is where I might use a, a nice light color pencil. I can use a green, whatever color I want to use. A lot of times I use greens and blues. Pretty good ones. So I'll take, because I already have the pink in there, I'm just going to take a little bit to change the color here and there. Remember, my goal is to make this a good piece of art, you know, so I have to remember how to make it interesting as well as anything else. I really wore that one down. See if I can find another one I like. Nope. So 
I liked it because it was soft. So I could grab um, a piece of charcoal. I'm actually going to do this with a piece of charcoal. This is vine charcoal. If that's what I liked about that pencil, then that means I have it in another method. You know, vine charcoal is all they've done is put inside of that pencil. Um, that comes in and then goes out, so this feels a little too far out there. Okay. So I'm building the darks so that my lights show up, basically. You know, that's all I'm doing, because the last thing I'm going to do is come in and hopefully put that white in there, and it's all going to stand out and look good. But, so I have to make sure that I get all of this stuff underneath. And it works anything you're doing, a portrait, anything. All you're going to be doing is making sure that you have the value underneath of the top layer. And that may be, you know, throwing in a color that's similar, but the last thing you want to put on there are the highlights in a pastel. And you may, you know, put a few hairs here and there of the darker, but um, I'm just going to blend out a few areas because I don't want it continual strokes. If you have too much of anything, it's going to look bad. So now I'm going to try going in and doing the white and seeing how, and this is actually a creamy yellow color. Um, I'm going to start in some of the um, areas that are not as bright. I want the, you know, I'm picking my areas that are a little bit at an angle away from the light that are a little darker in value of white using the creamy color. Following and trying to keep the values the same as they are in the areas without overdoing it, but putting enough in that he looks light enough as well. You know, I mean, I can't have it too light, can't have it too dark. He is a, a very white dog, mostly white. So this goes with any hair you're doing on a person as well. You know, you're, you're working in the dark values first and then coming back with the light. So even in my light area here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this yellow in because I'm going to come back with a little bit of white. I don't want to overdo it with the white. But hopefully I'm going to have something strong enough and stiff enough that when I come back in with this hair that I'm doing, it's just going to finish the whole painting. So you do, you know, even though I was working with really soft stuff earlier, I really want to make sure that I have the harder stuff when I need it as well. This is a lot lighter in here. Now here's where I want to get really kind of creative with my edges, so I want to make sure that I leave those edges how I want them to stay, because a lot of this stuff is just going to be erased back into, I just want to make sure that I'm planning for finishing at this point in some of the areas. So I'm making sure that my hair strokes are not too perfect and that the edges, the way that it lays over this is interesting. So these would be great books to be able to pick up at garage sales and stuff. Huh? Oh yeah, Amazon for a dollar, you know, yeah. anytime you can get a used book, that's great. Yeah, a lot of those are from there. Um, in fact, the horse, the sculpting animals book is from Amazon.
I'll actually put this video on YouTube, possibly, so you guys can go there. That might be the best way for it to... Uh... How do you get it off of YouTube? Off? Oh, uh -huh. you mean, oh, to download it so you can uh -huh. watch it? You can't. You just, uh, oh. you just watch it. You just watch it on YouTube all the time. Yeah. So some hair is going up and down and some is out. Yeah, you have to really pay attention to what direction the hair is going. That's pink. The dog is kind of spotty, but you're not really trying to do that. Yeah, there's spots, but it's really not, hard to get. You made it a little more attractive. <laughs> oh, hey. oh, that's her dog. That's your dog? Yeah. Oh, my We should have warned you. <laughs> well, no, he looks a, oh, like a friendly nice. dog. <laughs> yeah, she is a friendly dog. He's usually more, smiling. He's, well, no, I'm saying he's more muddy than, than he is German Shepherd. He's not Shepherd, he's right, well, Australian cattle that's what dog. I thought it was back there. And Dingo. And Dingo. You a little everything, huh? Yeah, you missed the whole first conversation we were having, sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't get here late. Yeah. In more ways than you knew. <laughs> Just as well, it's all right. <laughs> See, now, for some reason, I'd die to get that heart on there.